Okay, so I'm uh, Tom Adam. I run a small uh, development company uh, called Instantiate. We do uh, full stack development. Um, and we're always looking for work, so anyone needs a contractor, give us a shout. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, Xdebug today. Um, and hopefully why you should be uh, using it for remote debugging. So, uh, start with a question. Are any of you using Xdebug right now? Quite half, actually, that's pretty good. So th th there's lots of different approaches to debugging. A lot of people tend to use the sort of um, file dump, echo and die, you know, littering your code with uh, uh, nasties that you could easily leave in there. Um, there's a few other approaches you could take, sort of enhanced fire dumps, the kind of thing you get in uh, frameworks like Symfony or um, uh, there's uh, Ladybug, uh, I think there's another one called uh, Truthy, something like that. Tracy, Tracy that's it, Tracy. Yeah, um, uh, really they're kind of just an extended via dump. Um, gives you a lot more information. Some people use logging. Um, then you have to run your program, look at the logs. Again, it's kind of after your execution is completed. And um, uh, recently, I've seen unit testing used. Um, just, but I mean that requires that you know where the problem is. You can add tests in specific to solving solving the problem and hope to find it. Uh, I, I'll. Um, Make a case for Xdebug. <laughs> uh, uh, Xdebug's an interactive debugger. Um, they sort of originally came about from um, compiled languages um, where it would take a long time to go uh, to put sort of uh, debug into your actual code and then go through the compile stage again. Um, so they came up with these. Uh, Sort of debuggers that you can actually use while your code's executing. And they support like quite a lot of very useful features, like altering variables at runtime, um, uh, viewing a stack trace, um, adding conditional breakpoints to stop execution of your code in a certain situation. Great for loops. Uh, remote debugging, where you can connect to a machine that's not necessarily the one you're working on, um, and debug that machine. Um, and execution line alteration. PHP doesn't support this, but some, some languages, Java, I think, allows you to actually alter the line, line of code that's, uh, that's currently, currently running or waiting to run. Um, so uh, Xdebug is a module for PHP. Um, it supports pretty much every PHP version um, that you're likely to come across, right, right up to 7.1, the latest version. Um, it's pretty easily installed. It's available in most package managers. Um, you can install it from Peckle, um, and there's DLLs for Windows developers as well. It's got lots of additional features outside of um, the uh, interactive debugging that I'm going to show you today. Um, like uh, There's a profiler, uh, code coverage, um, which is actually used by all the PHP code coverage tools. You have to have Xdebug installed to to get them working, because that's what provides the, the base data. Um, there's a thing called a scream operator. Uh, sorry, a scream, um, scream setting, which, you know, if you put like a at symbol in front of a, uh, in front of a piece of code, it suppresses uh, notices and warnings um, from that piece of code. That completely disables that, so you see, you see everything that your, uh, your uh, app's complaining about. And it's uh, supported by most IDs. Um, so you've got all the usual suspects like you know, PHP Storm, uh, Zen Studio, NetBeans, but you've also got uh, plugins for Vim. Um, you get uh, apps that run in your browser um, to hook onto Xdebug. Um, there's a plugin for Sublime. So pretty much anything you might be using will have a Xdebug plugin for it. There's even a command line um, command line app for uh, Linux. Um, I'm not sure if it works on a Mac, but uh, yeah, so it, there's sort of whatever you're doing, you will have a way to talk to the Xdebug, um, uh, the output of the Xdebug. So 
I'm going to attempt a live demo. Uh, I haven't done this before. I'm not using my own machine. Um, so <laughs> this could get a little bit interesting. Um, uh, I have given it a test earlier. Hopefully, it should, uh, it should work. All right. So can, can everyone see this OK? Um, been struggling getting it any bigger. The problem is the debugger is down here. Um, I can't really make this much bigger. If, if you're having trouble at the back, you might need to move forward a little bit. Because um, uh, there's, there's going to be a lot going on in these two, two sections here. And uh, I, can't, I can't get them any bigger for some reason. So OK, uh, I'm going to start. The debug is already running, actually. I, I'm not going to go into the details of uh, configuring it in a specific IDE. Um, I will talk later about how to how to set the uh, module up um, in PHP, um, but uh, yeah, so I, I kind of just want to show you the some of the features of it, um, so you get an idea of what it can do. Um, so um, this red dot here indicates a breakpoint. It's a, a point that uh, code execution is going to uh, going to stop at. Hopefully, everything everything goes to plan. So. Okay, excellent. All right. Uh, this blue highlight here um, shows that uh, it's the current current line being executed. It, it is. It did actually run. It's um, it's showing that it's stopped on line six. Um, this is sort of uh, paused paused execution. Um, this is just sort of a standard standard breakpoint. And from from this, um, we can use the controls to sort of uh, have a look into the code. Um, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to show you a um, uh, these buttons down here to start with. Um, we've got this one here, which is a step over. Basically, skips um, skips a line of code that would take you out of the current context. So we're we're currently in this uh, index.php. Um, this is instantiating a new class, um, but I'm not going to look into what's in that class because I'm just going to I'm just going to um, Step over, effectively step over that line. It's still going to execute, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to trace into it. All right. um, and so we've we've ended up at this line. The code code behind there's run. Um, so just uh, just restart it, just so I can show you some of the other. Right now, I'm going to uh, step into um, this here. This will actually um, go into the it, into this class. So effectively, we'll go um, sort of one deeper into the into the stack trace. And we've ended up in the con constructor of class one, um, and you can see we started at line six for index.php. We're now at line ten of um, class one. Um, last last button I'm going to show you is step out. Um, this sort of takes us back out of this context and back to the parent in the stack trace. So that should take us into the line seven of index.php. And now we're at line seven. Okay, just uh, just restart it again. My example isn't detailed enough to uh, keep keep running. I have, I'm going to have to keep restarting it as we go. Um, okay, so back at line one now. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is called a conditional break. So um, we're going to go into class two here, where I've got a loop. So uh, one of the problems is if, you, if you've got a long loop and you put a breakpoint in the loop, every time you, you'd have to continue execution every time you hit that point in the loop. Um, 
So if you're, if you're looping a million items and you're interested in the 500,000th, um, you can have to hit uh, the continue button 500,000 times. So conditional breakpoints solve this, solve this issue for us. So if I add a breakpoint here, yeah. get some breakpoints. So this is line 14, class 2. I can add a condition, say, x, where x is 8. OK, so now when I continue, um, execution st should stop when this, this value is 8. This, uh, <laughs> actually, looking at it now, this is a pretty terrible example, where x comes in as uh, 5. Um, and then it's going around here four times and adding, adding a number to it. So it should count up to nine in total, and it'll stop at eight. Uh, could have made that quite a lot clearer. And it didn't stop. Fantastic. I'm dragging stuff everywhere. <laughs> Let's just double check this. Let's run that again, just in case. All right, that's not stopping. I'll keep going. It should have stopped. Not entirely sure why that's going on. It worked earlier. Uh, um, so, well, that's that's the theory of it. You set a breakpoint. You set the condition that you want it to end on, and it should stop. Um, so, uh, another thing we can do is alter alter variables. So. If I put a breakpoint here, um, restart, continue. Yeah, x is eight. Um, oh, and now my breakpoint works. <laughs> no idea why that happened, but uh, yeah. So I can actually go into the variables. Um, Very good point. Very good point. I'm only going to eight. So uh, I can change this, say, to 19. Um, and it actually alters, alters the value. Um, so you can, you can trial, um, trial sort of changes to values while you're, while you're executing. Um, so one of the other things I'd like, well, we've already had a look at the stack trace. Um, when you're, say, working with a framework, um, this can be really useful for figuring out how you got to, got to a piece of code deep in the framework. You set your breakpoints, you run it, it'll halt, halt, at the, uh, halt the point you're interested in, and you can actually look up the stack and see, if I click on these, it actually shows the, each point of the stack, and you can see the variables as they were in the state at that point when it Changed, changed context to uh, to the next level. Um, so here, I mean, we can see the values here in the context of this this line. Um, if we go back to class one, we have to see the um, variables here are different. So it's kind of it, it, the the variables and the uh, stack trace are linked linked together. Gets you good insight into your code. Um, and the final thing I wanted to show you was uh, breaking on exceptions. Um, I'm a little bit concerned this isn't going to work given the, given the last one. I'll, I'll give it a try, though. Um, so this, uh, this code contains a, uh, throws an exception here. Uh, and I'm just going to try and catch this exception and halt, halt execution at the point it's thrown. OK, so you can see there's no, there's no breakpoint here. If I continue execution, it's actually it's terminated, uh, or it's, um, it's uh, broke at this point here. Um, uh, so it, you know, as the exception was raised, it's actually, it's actually kind of sitting one past this, because it's already thrown the exception. You can't avoid, avoid it being thrown. 
Um, you know, you can't take a step back from that point. Um, but uh, this this can be really useful for uh, you know trying to trace back from you, you know the exception that's being thrown. You want to see what caused it. Um, then you can look at look at your uh, look at your stack and try and try and figure out how you got to this point. Um, okay, get back to the. Okay, so uh, getting on to the uh, boring bit of things, um, I'm, I'm going to give you a quick, uh, quick explanation of how to configure this. I, I think a lot of people tend not to use Xdebug because it can be a bit of a pain to set up, but um, once, once you know how it's done, it's pretty quick and simple. Um, I, I've never really understood why everybody that has ever written about this has made it look very, very complicated. It's, it's really not. So um, I, th I think most of the complication comes from the fact that um, Xdebug is a client. So the, 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 the module is actually a client, and it connects to your IDE or what, whatever you're using to do the debugging. As a, um, it, it runs a server. So it's, it's kind of an inverse relationship to how you'd expect it to work. Um, so basically, you just enable the module. Um, in your php.ini, you set Xdebug uh, remote enable to 1. And then you use a browser plugin. Um, you see there's a, there's a little bug up here. Um, there's details of which plugin this is here. You, you get them for uh, Firefox, Chrome. Um, and you, it just allows you to turn on the debugger. Um, the, way, the way the debugger is actually activated is it adds a, uh, um, a get parameter to your, to your web requests um, that sort of triggers the debugging session. Um, so with this, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. Um, PHP Storm's got a sort of zero configuration um, set up for, uh, for Xdebug. As long as you leave everything standard in your, in your config, it'll, this is as much as you've got to do to actually make a connect. You just hit listen in Xdebug, uh, sorry, in PHP Storm, and it's, it's, it's away. It's slightly different uh, for the command line. This, this is for uh, web only. Um, on, on the command line, you need to manually set a, um, set a give it an ID key um, for your debugging session. Um, this is actually something this uh, this plugin has built into it. You can actually change that, um, but it's the default it's got for PHP Storm works with the zero configuration, so you, don't, you basically don't even need to touch that. You just install it, turn it on, away you go. Uh, uh, so on the command line, um, uh, you just Export so this is a uh, environment variable. You just export it um, and then um, start your console application, and it will trigger the debugger. Um, there is a there is a uh, alternative you can set in PHP.ini. Um, you can set the IDE key and then set remote auto start, and then every time you run a console task, it will um, attempt to connect to your IDE. Now, uh, from inside Vagrant, it's a little bit more complicated because, because of the sort of client-server um, uh, sort of uh, architecture of it. So you have to actually tell it where it's going to connect to. Um, if, if, you're, uh, if you're using web, uh, if you're debugging a, a web application, you can um, just set this remote callback equals one in your um, uh, php.ini. Um, that will attempt to connect back to the IP that's made the web request. Um, so uh, it, you, can, you can skip this line if you're, if you're using web and add that in. Um, but you, you must check your firewall if you're running one. Um, gave, me a bit of a, uh, gave me a bit of a headache um, on Fedora. Um, it, by default, it uses port 9000. You can set it to whatever you like, but just make sure it's open or you're, it's just not ever going to connect. Um, lose loads of time. There's a few uh, gotchas with Xdebug. Um, it makes code execution very slow when you're not using it. You don't want it running when you're not using it, really. Uh, it's a massive performance issue for CLI apps. Um, so things like Composer, um, unit tests, um, you know, uh, the sort of command line programs that come with most frameworks now, they all run extremely slowly if you've got uh, the Xdebug module enabled. 
I'm not even talking about connecting to your IDE. Your IDE may have debugging switched off. It's just the fact that it's enabled will make it slow. I um, found recently that, uh, in a system we were working on that tests were three times faster with xDebug, uh, the module disabled. So just make sure it's not running in your test environment or not enabled in your test environment. This is a fix for the command line. Um, what I've done is to selectively uh, enable xDebug. So it's off, off in my config. And then I uh, alias the PHP command to switch it back on. Um, just, just using this. I mean, it, it, this is just for Linux, but uh, I'm sure it'll probably work the same on a Mac. Um, uh, and so you, your module is disabled. Uh, and then you switch it on when you need it. And then when you do something like run Composer, just type Composer, you're not typing PHP in front of it, your xDebug module doesn't start, and you still maintain your sort of usual level of speed. Um, incidentally, I've been talking a lot about Composer and the effect of this on Composer, but just recently they've... Hmm? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, just recently they've, uh, they've fixed that problem by restarting um, PHP with xDebug disabled um, when um, Composer starts. So it doesn't, it used to warn you, it doesn't warn you anymore. It's because they've, they've fixed the issue, but it will affect your unit tests. So uh, make sure it's off. <laughs> um, is there a solution if you're serving PHP through something like Apache and you're not running PHP, but you still want the website to run xDebug? You're not running PHP? You are running PHP, but you're not typing PHP. It's being served by oh, Apache. Right, okay. So um, this this is a uh, you you enable the module. Um, is there a way to have it disabled? Like disabled. Just there? Um, to be honest, I don't find it that much of a problem with a web application. The 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 problem really comes when you've got a lot of um, uh, a lot of nesting, and things like Composer use a massive quantity of nesting when it's working out your dependency tree. Um, same, same with unit tests, there's a very high degree of nesting there. I think it's something to do with the, the way it hooks into context switching. And it's probably somewhat to do with the stack trace, I expect, that makes it so slow. But I, I found, yeah, it does slow down your web requests, but not to the point that it becomes unusable. I think I've noticed a difference of like, maybe like 200 milliseconds to 800. So if you're running, if you've got your regular box and you're running Apache just to test to use your app, mm -hmm. and you're also running um, like Composer in the same regular box, yeah. could you have Xdebug turned on for your app but turned off for Composer when you do a build, for example? Uh, yes. Um, so that that would be that it, because um, it uses a separate uh, PHP uses a separate uh, PHP.ini for um, web and for the command line. You can just have it switched on in one of them. So you may just want to switch it on in web. If you're not doing anything to do with command line, yeah. just no point enabling it in the command line. But the, the thing is, most package managers, when you install it, enables it for both web and command line um, without asking you. It's just automatically on. So you'd have to go and, you'd have to go and turn it off. It's as simple as deleting a file in the, um, in the, in the configuration, uh, in the configuration directories. Right. Uh, okay, so I've got a few more. If you're using FPM, um, you have to set a fast CGI timeout. Um, it's a requirement of the protocol. Um, uh, it's most sort of guides you see to setting up FPM suggest 60 seconds for that parameter. That means that if you're debugging a web, um, a web application and you spend more than 60 seconds in your, in your debug, it will terminate your uh, terminate your request, and so after you've spent a couple of minutes, a couple of minutes looking into your current breakpoint, and you hit continue, it just switches off. Um, so it's it's important to set a really long, fast CGI timeout. I actually use one hour in there. Just it's just for dev. Doesn't matter, you know. Just set it to something big. It's I mean the the reason they have fast CGI timeout in the um, in the first place is to prevent. Uh, you know, sort of one or two web processes tying up all your all your um, uh, FPM uh, children. Um, uh, so it's, it's really a setting for production. So just set it high, it'll be fine. 
uh, one of the other things is um, breakpoint positions. It, if you um, if you randomly set uh, well, if you set if you set breakpoints on multi-line statements, quite often it won't stop execution. It's because um, under under the hood, there's only certain points in sort of PHP's core that uh, execution can be stopped. Um, so it's a little bit complicated. It'll take a bit of trial and error to figure it out. Um, but for example, if you've got a, um, a multi-line array assignment, it's the second line of the assignment that actually you can set a breakpoint on. So it, if, if you're working with multi-line statements, I just kind of stick sort of one on the first line, one on the second, one on the third. It'll stop, you know, <laughs> stop on one of them. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, other than the, uh, the array assignments, I haven't figured out any of the others. It seems fairly random to me, but I'm sure there's some, uh, uh, like, you know, um, pattern to it. The other thing is max nesting level. Um, so there's a parameter in Xdebug that sets a, um, the maximum um, uh, level of sort of function nesting that it'll allow. Um, I think this was uh, like to protect your resources. I'm not entirely sure what it's what it's for, but it used to be set to 100 by default. And um, things like Composer, modern frameworks will use. You, by the time you get to your controllers, you'll have um, you, you'll be already more than 100, uh, you know, 100 functions deep, um, or 100 100 lines up your stack trace in some cases. Um, so it's it's is far too low. You need to set it to around 250. Um, the most recent versions of Xdebug actually have this default into 256. So it's not really a problem anymore if you're using current versions, but it's just something to, uh, something to keep in mind if you try it and you suddenly start getting this message everywhere that uh, max nesting level reached. Um, uh, so I hope my, <laughs> my sketchy demo Maybe uh, maybe made you want to try this out. Um, I, I find it a massive help for uh, my development. Um, uh, I used to, you know, be uh, printing printing loads of things to the screen. Um, you know, if if you're doing that and you're debugging a web application, sometimes it disappears due to your CSS or, um, you know, it just I found it so much easier using this and actually be able to manipulate the code. Look up the stacks, um, you know, and actually break it in the points that uh, the break execution in the points you specifically want to look at. Um, uh, I don't know. I think uh, I was just giving it a try. It only takes about five minutes to set up, maybe ten, and uh, it might sort of revolutionise your uh, your debugging practices. Uh, so, anyone got any questions? If you about time out, does the browser time out also have a problem? No. Um, I haven't found that at all, actually. Um, yeah, it, uh, it's, it's, yeah. So the browser will just sit there for now? It will, yeah. Okay. I mean, I've, I've walked away from my machine during a debugging session, come back, and it's still, it's still working. To be honest, I'm not sure I've actually checked that the browser um, has maintained it and that you'll end up with something at the end of it. But it, I guess that doesn't really matter so much as long as you can come back and continue your debug. Because um, the, the code continues executing. That's that's the important thing. Your browser might have given up, but your PHP hasn't. Sometimes the client disconnect will trigger PHP to kill it. But... Yeah, I don't think it does while this is running. So, yeah, it certainly hasn't in my experience. Yeah. <coughs> Have you had any luck enabling uh, Xdebug uh, behind a reverse proxy? No. Uh, I've never I've never tried to do that, but there is uh, a thing called uh, a debug p proxy, um, which might be worth looking up. So it's it's like a sort of um, like an arbitration point. It, actually, it was designed to allow multiple developers to debug the same application. So you set uh, so the, the uh, debugging sessions come into a sort of central point and then get sent out to different. To the to the person that triggered them, um, I think that might actually that might actually help because you might be able to sort of um, define that connection like sort of statically, um, and then uh, developers can connect in connect into it. Are you, are you thinking about doing it sort of on a like a like on a, a local? 
uh, mostly local, yeah. yeah. Not containers inside of a virtual machine. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, would you need to would you need to reverse proxy? Could you just open a port inside inside the VM? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, might make it a bit simpler. Uh, Carl. Is it possible to ignore vendor files when you're doing step into? It is. It is actually. Um, uh, so there is. Uh, that's, I I actually don't have a Mac. I, <laughs> I use Linux. I've got no idea what I'm doing on this thing, which has uh, been part of the part of the problem with this. But um, so. Um, and then under the debug. I'm guessing, sorry, under the debug one, if you open up debug, oh, right skip paths. Oh, yeah, 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 I see all your vendors in there. Cool, I, I've, I've actually, um, I've actually always used this to just skip specific methods of it. That's, that's, that's pretty cool, that's a new one for me. I'm going to have to give that a go. Um, that said, I, um, I actually quite often use xdebug for vendor exploration. Um, I, work, I work with um, Symfony Framework normally, and uh, so for example, um, a couple of months ago, I was writing some new a uh, firewall um, or like an authentication system, and uh, the firewall is actually one of the more complex um, aspects of Symfony, and Xdebug was really really useful to actually uh, figure out where certain bits of code were being run and um, you know what I needed to change to make it do what I was I was trying to get it to do. So, so I, I do find it a really good exploration tool, and um, so I actually normally don't skip the vendor um, vendor files because you know a lot of um, I find a lot of what I actually need to debug is being executed at some point by the uh, by the framework, and quite often that has something to do with the issues I'm seeing. Uh, um, yeah. I was going to say, I just found um, the new Docker for Mac mm. um, needs some extra work to get it to, uh, for XDebug to work, okay. um, because it's all trying to do things around the local host, around 127001, because that's um, the port that will be exposed by your containers. Right. Um, but there is a way around it, which is... Is it, is it to do with that um, remote host program? Yes. You, yeah. But you, Basically, the, what the solution I've found is you create an alias for 127001 mm -hmm. and you do that debug proxy. So you send it out to, mm -hmm. they suggest 10, 254, 254, 254, send it out to that, and then you do your debug proxy to listen in. Cool. Yeah. Why don't you just expose the port? Sorry? Why don't you just expose the port? Because. Um, I don't know, it just doesn't, that doesn't work, I think, because both. But it just does seem you've got to kind of avoid using mm. local host. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions at all? No? All good. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks very much. Cheers.